Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Q at the Geek, and this is Shenzhen IO in real life, part four, the code. Okay, so today we're going to be going through and writing the code. We're going to be doing this in the Arduino IDE. It's not my preferred option, but this is what we're going to work with just for simplicity's sake. So there's a few things we're going to need to go ahead and start with, which is some variables. So we're going to come up here to the top and ignore that for right now. Come up here to the top of the sketch and give ourselves a few more lines. This is going to be the variables. So we're going to comment this correctly. And we're just going to do a couple of pound fines to start to define our pins. So this is going to be setting pin LED 1 and pin LED 2 to act on pins 8 and 9. Now we're going to go ahead and set up a couple of boolean variables that are going to help us track the state. We're going to initialize those to false just so that we know what they're going to be when they start. Now we're going to go ahead and create some delays that will help us achieve the timing that we want. So we've created the delays that are going to be going for our 5 second delay as well as our random delay. And how we're handling the random delay is we're just starting with a very small number, um, which is the 25 that's going to be acting close to our 25 uh, milliseconds. And then we're going to use this delay random to generate a number between 0 and 250 and add that to that 25. And this is just initializing the timers that we're going to be using. So now that we've got this portion done, we need to go into our setup. So the setup is going to consist of basically writing out our pin modes and writing a low state for each of our LEDs. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up here to this bracket and I'm going to move that down. That's one of the things that just really bothers me as far as my coding standards, as far as what I like to follow. And I, I feel that this helps you define blocks easier. And so that's just one of those things that I'm going to be doing with how my code is. I know plenty of people that like to leave the opening bracket at the end of a line, but I don't think that looks very good. So that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this way. And now we're going to move into our loop. So for our loop, what we're going to go ahead and start with is we're going to basically check our timers and see what time it is. If it's elapsed a certain time, then we're going to go ahead and toggle our LEDs. So we're going to start out here with our first if statement. So this is going to be for timer LED1 and we're checking if it's less than the current time in milliseconds. And if it is, then we're going to create a function here in a second to toggle the LEDs. So let's toggle LED and pass it a 1. And then we're going to reset our timer. And now let's go ahead and do that again for timer 2. Now again, this, what this is doing is it's going to grab the time in milliseconds. We're going to add the delays on it that we've already determined, which are from there. And we're going to, for this, add on our random time. Now, our one last thing, we need to actually create this function here that we're calling this toggle LED. So we're going to do this by void because we're not returning anything. Toggle LED, so the name of the function, passing in an integer, 
we're going to just call LED. And I'm going to add a few more lines down here at the bottom just so we can continue to see this. And let's now write a switch statement basically to toggle our LEDs based off of which one gets passed in. So what we're doing here is we're actually coming in if it's if the case is LED 1 that we're passing in from up here, then we're going to go ahead and check the state for LED 1 and we're going to set it equal to the inverse of its state. Uh, so we're nodding it here and then we're going to do a digital write out to the LED pin, whatever our current LED state is that we've just set here and then we're going to break out of this case. So let's go ahead and write case two, and it's gonna pretty much be the same thing um, just for LED two. So that's it for our code. Let's go ahead and try to verify this. We'll go ahead and save it in here for a fake security camera. As you can see, I've already attempted this just as trial run. I'll go ahead and go ahead and replace that. And done compiling, everything looks good. So in the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and program this onto our board once we get that built up. So that's pretty much it for right now. We're gonna come back in part five and we're gonna build up the circuit board. We're gonna 3D print the enclosure, we're gonna program the board and put it all together and see if it works. So as always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Also, if you wanna support the channel, feel free to check me out on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description below, and that will give you some exclusive content that I create through the channel. As well, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at QatTheGeek, and check out my website, QatTheGeek.ddns.net, to see what I'm up to and see what's going on right now. Also, be sure to leave me comments in the comment section below or on my channel page to let me know what things you want to see next, what things you liked about this, and what things you didn't like. Thanks for staying this far, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.